Welcome back to part two of The Faculty. We're so sorry that we couldn't fit it all into one episode. So here's part two. Year nine is studying visual literacy and how techniques shape meaning. Over to you, Coda. What's happening with year nine? One English one is working on stuff related to visual literacy and the way the visual techniques shape meaning. Okay. In year nine, we're learning about visual literacy. What is visual literacy, you might ask? Visual literacy is the way we interpret pictures, videos, or advertisements within the world around us. Arthur will now explain just some of the techniques used in this one advertisement. Now, as we can all see here, there is an advertisement. But what do we see first within this advertisement? Well, we can first see the impact of the fist to the face. This is called salience, as we noticed it first. We can also see the car and the other car painted on the face and the fist are also impacting with each other, which is a nice visual metaphor. We can also see the arm leads our eyes to the cars impacting each other, which creates it makes it even more salient. And now that's enough can... for now. Arthur will explain more in a later video. I must say, you nine look very excited about visual literacy. We're reading on visual literacy, you ten are now studying films and documentaries. I love the build. They are learning camera and other techniques relating to film. Now let's cross over to Ryan. Ryan, what's going on in D-Block? Yes, here we are in D-Block and Year 10 are studying film and documentaries and all the technology. Apologies Ryan, we have breaking news. This is huge and groundbreaking news with members of AR creating a Minecraft world based on Australian voices. Now we cross over to our corresponding at D6 for more details. We are at room six. We have some very exciting news. As you as you know, year eight have been studying Australian voices. So members of AR English are creating a Minecraft game based on Australian voices. We haven't got too many details so far, but let's find out. We're at AR and we've been talking about Australian voices in English class. We've come up with an idea. We are going to create an Australian Minecraft based world and then film it and put it online. The way we're going to do this is by hosting a Minecraft server on the school computers or our own computers and let all the people who are helping out join. We would then create things such as famous buildings, Australian foods and other Australian related things. After all of this, we'll create a tour of the world we have created and upload the video on YouTube. Wow, this sounds fantastic. Any more news? We will definitely keep our viewers up to date with this one. This is first for the faculty. There's so much happening in year eight. Huge apologies, Ryan. Let's cross over to him now and see what's happening in year 10. As I said before, year 10 has been studying. Sorry, Ryan. More breaking news from year seven and year eight. This year's spelling bee has been announced. This spelling bee is for year seven and eight only. We have our correspondent down at the print room now. What have you got for us? This is Zay Halabi down at the print room. Part of the press is year seven and eight spelling being listed being printed. It is happening as we speak. I have a copy in my hand. The list will be handed out to year seven and eight classes soon. We will be following this story closely. It sounds like a big competition. All to find the year seven and eight best spellers. Now back to Ryan. What is happening with you, Tim? Ryan! I think we just lost Ryan. Time Each part of the faculty is definitely literacy. We have literacy um, programs spanning E7, 8 and 9. Let's cross over to Faris. Faris, what's going on in the library? Year 8 have begun the literacy assessment task which looks at them choosing any place in the world and doing a two to three minute speech. With COVID-19 restrictions on overseas travels, we may not be able to go overseas, but this assessment task brings the world to Australia. We are a couple of students which country they will choose. 
This speech is part of the Around the World unit. There are so many beautiful places around the world we could choose from. As it is supposed to be a persuasive speech, choose a place that you really enjoy and persuade your audience to go there. That means use a lot of vivid adjectives and adverts. Be descriptive. The golden sand and pristine waters of Hawaii. I feel like going for a swim. And add a couple of rhetorical questions. Do you feel like a relaxing getaway holiday? I would. Where would we go? Hmm. How about Barcelona, Spain? Ola Capasso. How about Cairo, Egypt? Salomon Alekin. How about Paris, France? It's Bonjour, Sava Bien. Have a safe trip! And now for sport. Let's cross over to Krishnev. What's going on, Krishnev? Hi everyone, I'm Krishnev and welcome to the faculty's sport. After many years without debating, we have started debating again. And the year 10 had recently had a great victory. And please welcome Wan with his expertise on debating. Hi Wan. The wedding is being done by Zoom these days, and the boys were very excited. Let's have our live crossover with them. Hi boys, this is Van Yuen from the faculty. Congratulations on your great win, Dante. Take us through this historic victory. Yesterday, we debated against Eldersley High School. It was a great match, and I think that we did great as a team. Our debate was so good that we came out swinging, and honestly, I do not think that Shakespeare could write a better sonnet than us. It was a guts, gutsy match. We were the underdogs. We came from behind, and we took the victory. And what did the coach say before the debate? He told us to keep our heads straight and not get rattled. He told us not to get discouraged. He wished us the best of luck, and we are more than willing to do it again. After this great win, what is next? So what's left for us now? From now on, every debate is a do or die situation. The team that will come out is the team that's the best, and that's obviously going to be us. Thank you to our coaches, Mr. Harvey and Mr. Pick, for taking us on this amazing journey. May the best team win this competition and the trophy at the end of the road. Which we will. And that's sport. All we you two boys. Jonah, what's the next few weeks looking like? Hi, Jonah. Finishing the HSC exam, we were hoping for some return to normality. As you can see, there's a very busy front approaching, starting from week six in year eight and then pushing through week seven with year seven and nine and ten, and the big one of the course um, are the year eleven yearlies in week eight. So there's a lot of happening until the end of the term. So it's all study, study, and more study. Don't forget the marking. This is the one time I feel sorry for the teachers. <laughs> There's so much going on at the faculty. It has been great having you guys. See you next time!